Since we're studying macroeconomics, I figured we might as well study one of the economic platforms of one of the presidents of the United States, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan's economic policy were geared to first, reduce the growth of government spending. Second, to reduce income tax and capital gains tax. Third, reduce government regulation of the economy. And fourth, to control the money supply to reduce inflation. Before Ronald Reagan's term, the United States economy experienced what is called a stagflation wherein there is both a rising rate of unemployment and a rising rate of inflation. This is actually a very hard problem to solve because most of the time, to be able to solve one side of stagflation, either high unemployment or high inflation, one side is traded off. This economic crisis was actually solved by Paul Volcker, who during that time was the Fed Research Chairman. During his leadership, he applied a contractionary monetary policy wherein the money supply was lessened to fight inflation. After this, he was able to deregulate the economy to promote and stimulate growth again, therefore battling unemployment. Before Reagan's term, there was a scheme in income tax wherein the bigger your salary or the bigger your production for companies are, the bigger tax that you will have to pay to the government. This was counteracted by Reagan by justifying that if there is less tax for people to pay or companies to pay, there is more incentive for them to actually produce more. An example of a marginal taxing system is as follows. Person A earning a minimum wage will have to pay a tax of 10%, while person B earning 20% more than the minimum wage will have to pay 15%. Now, a person earning double the minimum wage will have to pay 30%. So, as the salary of one person increases, his tax percentage that he has to pay will have to increase also. This also applies to companies. To justify the lower tax rates, Reagan cited the Laffer Curve, a theoretical model stating that too low tax rates and too high tax rates translate to low government tax revenues. There is a balance that must be sought for maximum tax revenue. Also, during Reagan's term, the government successfully lessened its regulation of the economy, providing more flexibility for the economy to guide itself. Reagan's economic policies were inspired by supply-side economics, which basically says that borders to production, which influences supply, must be lowered to allow greater flexibility to be more productive. This is due to the fact that higher barriers create less incentives for producers to produce more. The outcome of Reagan's economic policies seemed to be great. The American GDP growth rate grew, unemployment rate was reduced, there were more jobs, and inflation was more controllable. These results, however, are, are disputed by Reagan's critics. They say, according to the Keynesian mind frame, that Volcker was the one responsible for this growth, as the markets equilibrate after the recession, which Volcker induced using his contractionary monetary policy, inducing growth and development in the economy. Also, the lower income and corporate tax rates were actually not as realistically successful as Reagan would want it to be. As a matter of fact, the tax composition was just actually changed. So instead of getting the tax from those who earn more, he got it from those who earn less and who are just starting to build a business. Here we can see how macroeconomics can be applied in the real world and how it is interpreted by different economists. I hope you were able to learn some. Till next time. But it's not so